Um, the next speaker is uh, Mike Brlik. Close enough. Close enough, okay. Uh, he has received uh, training as a theoretical physicist at Charles University Prague, Florida State University and University of Michigan. For over 50 years, he has worked as a geophysicist in various functions for Shell and ConocoPhillips in Houston, Texas. His main focus is in 3D and 4D quantitative reservoir characterization, interpretation and numerical and inversion methods in geophysics. Please. Thanks for the introduction. Um, so I'm going to be talking about 4D seismic, which uh, is uh, one of the topics that I've been working on uh, with ConocoPhillips and also with Shell previously. Uh, so uh, over the past 20 years, um, 4D seismic has become a fairly uh, common method of reservoir monitoring. And uh, just to refresh your uh, memories or uh, show you a cheat sheet of uh, what uh, 4D seismic is about, we're basically looking at uh, changes in the reservoir and associated uh, changes in the uh, in the overburden as well, um, and uh, look at the changes that those uh, um, change uh, those reservoir changes uh, uh, have on the seismic traces. So the two main uh, impacts are uh, time shift, uh, travel time changes, and amplitude changes. So. The attributes that we look at typically in 4D is uh, time shift, uh, which is an in integral uh, uh, dynamic time shift, uh, and uh, its uh, differential form, which is called time strain. And then uh, when you do um, alignment of uh, the base and monitor seismic trace, then you can subtract the amplitudes and uh, calculate the difference. Um, and typically these differences are calculated in the AVO or AVA domain as well. Um, so, uh, the value proposition for doing for 4D interpretation is uh, it helps with reservoir management decisions. Um, it's useful to understand the dynamics of the reservoir, how the fluids are moving, what the pressure uh, is doing, and how um, uh, that uh, relates to production and, uh, uh, and injection. It helps you with well planning, uh, or looking for bypass pay, and uh, uh, optimizing position of uh, the next injector that you're planning, and also uh, reservoir model updating. Uh, reservoir models, uh, simulation models, in other words, um, they impact long-range planning, and they are also useful tools, tools for uh, field, ma field management. Um, the challenges for 4D interpretations are multiple. The current uh, um, state-of-the-art uh, of interpretation workflows uh, there are actually the conventional workflows are two. Uh, the first one is based on forward modeling uh, using the simulation models, rock physics models, and matching the synthetic traces to uh, the field, uh, field seismic traces which are observed. Um, and uh, the second workflow is going backwards, solving the inversion problem um, in 4D, which is uh, uh, very difficult, as I, I will try to illustrate in the next couple slides. So uh, what we end up with is a, a qualitative uh, approach, uh, uh, not very uh, well uh, calibrated, and uh, in the best case, we get something semi-quantitative. And most of the time, we do some sort of uh, linear approximations to the problems which are highly nonlinear. So the, the, the opportunity that we saw here was to uh, use data analytics um, uh, to uh, help us ingest uh, more data, number one, and number two, treat them consistently and uh, uh, help us uh, in the sense that we let the data drive most of the time. So we did a, a benchmarking exercise with um, 4D inversion uh, uh, workflows. We uh, designed a, a, a synthetic data set, which we gave to um, three contractors. Uh, you can uh, look at the uh, algorithm types. I'm not going to be uh, revealing any more uh, just, just to protect their anonymity. Um, and uh, they had also different types of uh, rock properties inversion because uh, first you have to invert uh, into the elastic domain. And then from the elastic domain, you ultimately want to get to the 
reservoir property domain, so it's a two-step process. And we picked the, um, the contractors that gave us uh, a pretty good response in, in terms of the 3D inversion results. So these are cross plots of the uh, true value versus predicted value of the acoustic impedance in a 3D sense. So these clouds looked uh, the best. Uh, we had uh, about six contractors and picked uh, the three best ones for the 4D part. And this is the, uh, the follow-up. Uh, in the 4D part, you see, uh, again, uh, changes in the acoustic impedance versus uh, 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 the true versus uh, uh, predicted. And you see that uh, the agreement uh, is uh, considerably worse than in the 3D sense. And uh, the depressing part of the story is that this is just the beginning, because that, that then you have to go and apply a uh, an inverse rock physics transform to get to the reservoir properties. So it looks pretty ho hopeless even with the best contractors uh, uh, in the industry. And you can convince yourself uh, looking at the acoustic impedance that's uh, from the model uh, compared to the inverted one uh, on a uh, well section. So that uh, doesn't seem to be the way to go. Um, and um, uh, another aspect of 4D interpretation is that you want to uh, be able to uh, distinguish between the different uh, production and injection scenarios, which have um, uh, different uh, Often they have uh, uh, similar signatures in the um, stack uh, amplitude domain. And you have to go to the pre-stack domain uh, to uh, tell them apart. So for instance, injection scenario which has uh, results in uh, pressure increase and water saturation in increase uh, has a similar uh, uh, acoustic impedance change as a production scenario where you have pressure drawdown and gas can come out of solution and you have uh, in both cases uh, about 3% change in the acoustic impedance uh, in the negative direction. And only in the pre-stack domain, when you look at different uh, uh, angles uh, in, the, in the angle gather, you can distinguish these two scenarios. So um, we are looking for um, um, separating pressures, saturations, and often uh, compaction effects and or temperature effects in the reservoir. And uh, these uh, uh, effects can only be separated effectively uh, if you use uh, a lot of pre-stack attributes. So what you end up with is uh, a data structure like this. So uh, on the vertical uh, scale, you have the uh, targets that you're trying to predict. And you use uh, um, a lot of attributes um, to uh, quantify those, ch those changes in these uh, uh, targets. And you have multiple steps. Uh, so. Uh, 4D surveys uh, range uh, from um, very repeatable uh, uh, surveys, dedicated surveys with many time steps. You can have uh, 14, 15 time steps. Uh, and you can see that uh, when you difference uh, these time steps to get the amplitude differences and the time shifts, time strains, the data prolif proliferation is, is uh, quite significant. So what you end up doing manually is basically uh, looking at uh, one or two attributes, trying to predict one target, and you can do it one step at a time, whereas uh, the op in the optimal case, you would be uh, uh, doing a simultaneous uh, prediction of all of these targets uh, using uh, as many attributes as necessary and uh, doing it uh, across all the time steps. So the proliferation of uh, time, uh, I mean, uh, time steps and uh, uh, attribute maps is, is quite significant in this case. And that's where we saw the opportunity for uh, data analytics, analytics to help us uh, do that. So what is the uh, analytics workflow? Um, we create attribute maps for uh, individual time steps. Um, so those are the difference maps. Um, um, and uh, we uh, extract um, data uh, at, uh, from these uh, uh, maps at the well points. Uh, we assume that we understand what's going on um, uh, at the time, uh, at, the, uh, at individual time steps uh, uh, at all the well points, and use uh, uh, that data set as a training data set um, and uh, uh, 
we use uh, uh, an analytic uh, uh, algorithm to train, uh, to get trained on this training uh, data set, uh, validate it, and uh, if we could get good results and we understand the model physic in terms of physics as well, we uh, predict uh, away from the wells. So it's a pretty simple uh, workflow. It's a shallow uh, machine learning uh, workflow, nothing too fancy, uh, a relatively straightforward uh, 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 prediction model. So um, what we did, we uh, did a similar thing as in the case of the 4D inversion. Uh, we used a synthetic case to convince ourselves that uh, this really can give us good results, that this is not some sort of a uh, cargo called science uh, uh, that we are we would be doing, and uh, we generated a, a 4D synthetic model with multiple time steps. Uh, we assume predictors, uh, elastic or seismic attributes, uh, and targets are, are known at the wells. So that's the ground truth. This holds exactly for the synthetic model. Uh, it's a different question, of course, in t in in the case of uh, field seismic. Uh, and then we uh, train, validate, uh, we, use, uh, di we uh, investigated di uh, different uh, uh, algorithms. Random forest was the most stable one. Uh, and we looked at uh, sensitivities, so you know, types of predictors, uh, attributes. Uh, we looked at the reservoir str stratigraphy effects, noise, etc. So I'm going to show you some of the results. Um, so this, is, this is basically the geometric uh, outline. We had uh, two stacked sands, uh, two main reservoirs, which were on top of each other, uh, coming and going into uh, uh, tuning. So there were some interference effects as well. We were interested whether we were going to be able to predict uh, 40 um, uh, targets for the lower reservoir as well. And uh, we started with elastic properties only, and then we uh, calculated this, uh, the seismic attributes as well. Uh, stack, gradient, intercept, uh, quadrature amplitudes, difference them for different uh, time steps, and uh, um, added noise, etc. So those were the inputs. Um, um, and we assume that uh, all the training data set uh, uh, is going to come from the well points. So that's the outline of the well points. And um, we started with, uh, I'm going to show you uh, just, just an example of uh, the noiseless uh, synthetic. So uh, we, we, uh, this, is, this should be um, uh, infinity. So we had no noise here, um, perfect uh, seismic response. Uh, and uh, we trained the uh, random forest on, on that data set for uh, water saturation changes, gas saturation changes, and pressures. And validations uh, uh, were uh, pretty good in, in, in the case of pressure and uh, gas saturation uh, because there is a, a low uh, di difference between uh, water and oil. Uh, you know, the, the resolution for water saturation is, is diminished. When we add noise, uh, the situation worsens some, somewhat, so the correlation for the validation is, is a little bit less. But still, we are able to predict uh, 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 saturations and pressures for this particular time step in a, uh, in a map sense. So here I'm showing an example of gas saturation inversion, where uh, I'm using the signal-to-noise uh, ratio equals 12, uh, just like in previous case. Uh, and uh, you see that uh, um, a comparison uh, of the simulation model, noiseless seismic, and signal-to-noise ratio equals 12. Here I'm uh, demonstrating how the correlation for the validation de degrades from going uh, uh, from elastic properties differencing uh, only to uh, convolution with a wavelet uh, uh, without noise and with noise. So you see some degradation for uh, these quantities uh, as you go to more realistic uh, uh, cases. However, it's still pretty decent in the, uh, at least in the case of pressure and uh, gas saturation. Uh, then we also, also did a comparison between uh, uh, pressure, uh, gas, and water uh, saturation uh, inversion for the, the upper reservoir and the lower reservoir. And as we expected, uh, we saw some degradation of the correlation coefficient uh, with increasing depth as well, but uh, that was uh, expected uh, from the uh, interference uh, effects from the synthetic seismic. And then you can uh, 
uh, compare uh, these predictions side by side, model uh, and prediction for all three, uh, water saturation, gas saturation, and pressure, um, we were able to distinguish pressures, uh, pressure, uh, pressure uh, changes uh, and gas saturation changes pretty uh, accurately. However, the sensitivity to, to water saturation was uh, uh, diminished, and we, we were able to uh, uh, get some reasonable predictions from uh, changes in water saturation uh, above about, about 8 to 10 percent. It's quite crucial that um, uh, we use pre-stack data. We also did a test where we removed all the pre-stack information, and uh, uh, this was basically the, the whole prediction was falling apart. Um, so it, it is important to get, to get uh, pre-stack uh, seismic attributes into the uh, workflow. And um, uh, you can do the same thing for uh, the lower reservoir. Um, again, a similar picture. Uh, inter inter uh, interference could be resolved, uh, even though uh, the validation results were um, a little bit worse. So what were the learnings? Um, we tested several uh, algorithms. Uh, random forest was the most stable, even though systematically we were obser observing these issues with over-predicting on the lo lower end and uh, uh, under-predicting on the higher end, uh, which introduced sort of a bias. Uh, and that those are the regions where you are most interested in, in the changes, the biggest and the smallest changes. Uh, but some of the uh, issues can be alleviated by adopting uh, gradient-boosted trees, for instance. Um, the benefit is that we uh, totally avoid the rock physics uh, inverse transform, so we, there's no rock physics calibration uh, in this uh, approach. Um, and uh, uh, a significant benefit that we saw was that we uh, integrated uh, very successfully with the reservoir engineers to update uh, the simulation models. Um, so what, what is the future? Um, I stole this uh, uh, slide from... Chris Olson. Um, what we are trying to do, uh, I forgot to mention that we actually uh, implemented this workflow on real field data, uh, which I was not allowed to present, so I'm just presenting the synthetic case. But we've, we have successful implementations of this workflow on uh, field data, real field data, and we're extending it to using uh, deep learning into full volumetric uh, uh, inversion workflow. At, at least that's the goal. That's it. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you, Mike. Very interesting presentation. Uh, did you, in your simulations or in your tests, did you drop well data so you have a sparser, kind of more realistic sampling of, of well data for training? Yes, so uh, we had several um, um, well point uh, data sets, and uh, we didn't see much of a um, degradation of the training and validation, which is uh, you know typically done by splitting the data set into uh, the training set and validation data set. Um, but if you decrease the number of well points, you still uh, are in the same ballpark in terms of R squared. So uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you.